everybody saw the whole meltdown with Kanye West on the panel with Alex Jones and Nick mm-hmm. Fuentes, and Kanye told everybody in no uncertain terms how much he loves Hitler and he wants to coddle his ball sack and tickle his taint. Right. Um, and Alex was sort of, he looked like reasonable in the context of that conversation. <laughs> scary, yeah. Because, you know, he sort of broke character a few times too. Like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, and Nick is just sitting over there like basically smiling and nodding. And agreeing, with, and agreeing with Kanye. Yeah. Uh, well, now, since then, um, Alex Jones has invited Nick Fuentes back on his show to have a debate about whether or not Hitler was based. Oh, my God. I wish I was kidding. Oh I wish God. I was joking. <laughs> I am not. We had, this was a, a, I think they spoke for over an hour and 20 minutes or something like that. I haven't watched this yet, by the way. Yeah, she, Crystal hasn't seen this yet. I watched the entire <laughs> debate. Did you really? I did. Oh I watched the whole God. thing. I mean, I watched it on double speed, but I watched the whole thing. Yeah. Anyway, let's take a look at the video and then we'll react. So let's just get the Hitler thing out of the way. Do you actually admire Adolf Hitler? In some ways, yes. And I'm not a national socialist and I'm not a, you know, I wouldn't identify that way because I'm a, I'm a Christian. So I'm not any kind of a socialist or a fascist. I, I like, yay, believe we should have a Christian government. It's a Christian country. God runs the world. We should have a government in accordance with that. But, but honestly, I, I don't share this uh, histrionic Jewish view that Hitler is this exceptionally boogeyman, evil figure. Uh, the 20th century is full of of violence. The 20th century is full of authoritarian ideologies run rampant, and, and that's a product of modernism and liberalism and all kinds of trends. Um, but but this idea that that I, my life is in any way impacted by Hitler, I, I have a lot more animosity for the ADL. I have a lot more animosity for the ZOA. I have a lot more animosity for the groups that have actually made my life and the life of my family materially worse personally and across the board with the society. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sick of being expected by Jewish media and Holocaust museums to to beat my chest like you kind of did the other week and say, oh, I hate Hitler. I, Hitler's, a, you know, it's it's like this weird. It's like 1984, you know, when they put the face on the TV and everybody's got to get all wound up. Uh, he's he's you're talking about 10 minutes. Figure. You're talking about 10 minutes of hate. Well, I legitimately hate Stalin, hate Mao, hate Hitler, hate the ADL, hate Barack Obama, hate the Democratic Party. And and I've always, remember me on Pierce Morgan? I didn't get a call from the ADL when I was on Pierce Morgan, the most popular thing he ever did, the biggest thing CNN did that year. They had a the, the, the ratings. They had like 50 million viewers for that. Their average show had like 10 million back then. And I said, Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. And if you try to take our guns, 1776 will commence again. I've always criticized Hitler. I've made documentaries about the Bush family helping fund Hitler and and the British royalty. So where we have a sticking point is is that Alex got the call as you as you sent out on social media. And I'm just curious, do you think I actually got a call to come out and criticize Hitler? You think that's a new thing for me? No, no, I know that you're very uh, vocally anti-Hitler over the years. I know that you're more of a libertarian, and so you have this view of history which which lumps in together Mao, Stalin, Hitler as authoritarians versus uh, freedom fighters, capitalists, you know, George, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson. So I, I'm familiar with your show and all of that. And and honestly, it was a little bit glib. You called me baby Hitler. I said, you got a call. You know, quite honestly, it's banter. But it is well known that you don't really talk about this issue. You're you're more talking about New World Order, Bill Gates and, and these sort of obscure conspiracy theories like Bilderberg. My show is a lot more focused on, you know, what you might call the Jewish question, which is what are we to do about this Jewish elite, these Jewish gangsters that run our Christian country? These and, and, I don't think, and, and I think that's a debate that should be had because. There's no doubt that leftism and the whole globalist power grab has wrapped itself in Judaism as its defense. So <laughs> there was so much there. So what you just saw there, and there's that's the reason why I picked this clip yeah. in particular. It's a microcosm of the entire debate. Okay. Which is Alex Jones being like, you know, I disagree with you. Hitler's bad. Hitler's wrong. He's a dictator. It wasn't right what he did. But you're asking a bunch of reasonable questions. Right, and, you know, about, this is something the- that should be discussed because we believe in the First Amendment. Right, about the Jewish media and the Jewish control of Washington. I mean, it's first, I, I don't, I'm reluctant to even analyze this like it's like a serious debate. I'm but going to. Fuentes <laughs> does something at the very beginning that is, you know, uh, he, he shifts the terms of the debate because Alex Jones says to him, do you admire Hitler? And he says, yes, I do. And then rather than 
going into like, I think he's great because he did X or Y or Z, he shifts it to, listen, he's not the only one who did evil things and we have this fixation on it, which is a very different, I mean, listen, that's also like, I think looking at Hitler as unique evil, I don't think that that's preposterous at all, but that's also a different grounds of debate than I actively admire Hitler, which was his starting point. So to he's your trying point, to sort of, you know, yes, he totally that's con- indefensible. He totally contradicts himself. Yeah. He goes, he says, Hitler's not an evil boogeyman figure. And then the very next sentence is, there are a lot of evil boogeyman figures. Right. So wait, which is it? Is he a bo- evil boogeyman figure? Or is he not an evil boogeyman figure? So. And he starts with, I, in, in many ways, I do admire yes, Hitler. Yes, he said that. So, but <laughs> it's a great point because there's go- going to come a time when Nick Fuentes is going to be one-upped. Because this is what we've been, you know, we've been on this track for a long time now where you could argue with Trump in 2016, it kind of reemerged where, you know, he would say the thing without actually saying it. He was sort of the master of like, I'm going to say this thing. I didn't really say the thing that you're saying I said. Right. And so he was, the whole game was like um, the dog whistle game. Right. And then eventually, you know, you had people in his mold come through, like, you know, the Milo Yiannopoulos types who take it like a step further. Yep. Um, And then... We're just seeing the logical progression of it. So now you have Nick Fuentes, who's willing to say, in many ways, I admire Hitler. But then he also it tries to take off the rough edges by, you know, be doing sophistry, basically. Right. And yes. there's going to come a time where he's going to be called, oh, you're a cuck because you don't even go into detail about why you like Hitler. Why you I like will him. go into detail about why I liked Hitler. Well, I mean, this Kanye, is the track that we're on. Kanye already went up. That's right. Because That's right. he is willing to say, like, no, no, I love Hitler. Yes. And here's all the reasons yes. why he built the highways and the microphone or whatever nonsense he goes into. And Alex, Alex was massively cucked in this entire discussion because he doesn't make, he doesn't really make an affirmative case as to why, obviously, Hitler's terrible. Let me go through all the specifics of it. He has, like, an anecdote about how his grandfather worked with Nazis right. and, like, they were rude or whatever. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? And so, ultimately, he like, he's not equipped to have this debate and to have this discussion because he's always making the argument of, like, well, I kind of see where you're coming well, from, and maybe there's a disagreement to be had here, but, like, I get it. Because he thinks his audience is more on Nick Fuentes' side. That's right. So that he He's cooking himself to the audience. That's he right. He doesn't think that he can, like, do the thing any normal, decent person would do and be like, dude, Hitler's bad. He murdered a lot of people. It was really evil. He tried to take over the world. It was terrible. Instead, he has to... Find, strike some moderate position in his mind about like, well, you got a point about like Jews running everything and like throw on all the anti-Semitic uh, tropes you can possibly imagine. But I just draw the line at, you know, I, I think like I, I hate Barack Obama and I also hate Hitler. Like to me, there's so, I mean, uh, that so was I the other that thing is like here. the way he put all these things to is like, I hate the ADL and I hate Mao and Stalin and I hate, and Hitler's just one among many. Yeah. So he sort of like seeds the ground on that as well. He's like, yeah. I hate Barack Obama and I hate Hitler. Yeah, let me, let me, <laughs> let me expound on that too. So um, yeah, when Nick Fuentes asks, like, do you admire Hitler? He says, in some ways, yes. Um, but then he goes on to say, but really, I'm a Christian, and I want a Christian government. Imagine the the cognitive dissonance to be like, I like Hitler, and I follow Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Like, can, you cannot get philosophies that are more polar opposites True. than the, the pacifist, you know, communist before communism existed, Jesus Christ, you know, super anti-rich, super in favor of, like, taking care of the poorest uh, among us. I mean, you could not get in two favor, polar opposite the immigrant and the stranger and the... Yeah, yeah, but even beyond that, though, you know that's not even really what he means when he says, I'm a Christian, I want a Christian government. He means he wants to set up, like, a Christian theocr- theocracy, sort of like the Christian version of Saudi Arabia. I mean, I think you know? he's, like, pretty much says that here. He does, right? yeah, I mean, he, he does. says God runs the world and we should have a country that is run in accordance with that. Like, that's a theocracy. Which, by the way, like, I know now I'm nitpicking because this is, like, such a side point in this broader conversation, but, like, dude... You can't pretend to be, I'm Mr. Like, rational, reasonable, and also I want to implement like my very particular religious ideology and force on everybody else. There's literally over 4,000 religions in the world, and is this guy really dumb enough to think like, no, I happen to be born into the exact right one, and I'm gonna force this on everybody else using the law. It just strikes me as so, like it's amazing to me that somebody like this could get any following at all, even beyond the fucking like outright Nazi love. It seems like it, it, anytime you go through stuff he says with a, a fine tooth comb, 
it, it, it's absurd. To the Alex point, you already pointed this out, but I wanted to bring it up too. The, I hate Stalin, I hate Mao, I hate Hitler, I hate Barack Obama. <laughs> Look, I got issues with Barack Obama that I've talked about in detail, but Jesus Christ to lump him in with those people? Like, yeah. what the fuck are you doing? Well, and he always, he's done this a number of times. Like, he doesn't feel like he can just let Hitler stand on its own of like, right. Hitler is evil without also throwing in like, let me put some communists in the mix. Right. Let and me said, now, let me throw they Barack Germans. Obama if you like the Germans, mix. they kill Germans. Right. Because he knows if he just says, well, they killed Jews, his audience would be like, eh. Yeah, but it's, oh, he killed the white people, the white people that we're supposed to love. Then he feels like he's on more solid terrain. So, yeah, I mean, listen, if you go down this path of your whole lane is I'm going to be the provocateur, someone is always going to be there to one-up you. And always. It didn't just, and it didn't start with Trump. I mean, Trump, yes, dog whistles, but it really, Trump, took what Fox News was saying and it took, took it one that step. one step further. That's a further. great point. Yeah. You know, they were doing e some more subtle dog whistling. That's right. Right? Yeah. About the crime and, you know, the type of stories they would cover and whatever. And he took that and took it to its logical conclusion of not just where, you know, we want, like, the borders closed, but the immigrants are rapists and they're bad people. And um, then you have, after Trump, yeah, you have this whole set of provocators who's willing to go one step further. Trump himself has now, like, gone much further in terms of his insanity and how overt he is. Retweeting his, QAnon on a regular basis. And overtly, like, authoritarian fascist rhetoric. Terminate too, the Constitution. Completely undeniable. But that you're always going to have that person, even Nick Fuentes, as he sits right now, being unwilling to fully articulate his love and admiration for Hitler in detail and his specifics, he's already being outdone by Kanye. All right. So my final point on this um, is when Nick was describing what Kanye West does, like yeah. what his lane is, he goes, you don't really talk about uh, about this issue. You talk about New World Order, Bill Gates, Bilderberg. I'm more focused on the Jewish question. That's what he says. And when I heard that, okay, yes, what Alex believes and does is less nefarious than what Nick Fuentes does, obviously. But, but when I heard that, my thought was, yeah, so you're fucking both wrong. Right. You're, you're all missing the real story here. The real story is what I would call the donor class, which is, you know, the big money interests, billionaires, corporations, they pay politicians, politicians do their bidding, they ignore the will of the people, and this is on virtually every single issue that you poll people on. Like, it, this isn't as sexy a conspiracy, but it is the true conspiracy. It's the open conspiracy. It's, it's out in the open. It's out in the, the open. Thing. You don't need to go, you know, I got obsessed with this, like, German coup plot thing with these people who, like, believe that Germany is is really fake and it's it was set up as a corporation and they want to restore, like, the Kaiser and this fake prince and whatever. And it's like, you know what, guys? And, and the people who disproportionately believe in this conspiracy come from one of the more economically depressed parts of Germany in, you know, former East Germany, and in that state, only 20% of young people say they think that unification has been a success. Mm. Majority of people say they think that in, in East Germany, majority of people think they feel like they are second-class citizens. And so, yeah, you have been screwed over, but the conspiracy is out in the open. You don't need some elaborate, like, behind-the-scenes QAnon-esque type of theory of the global cabal of elites it's all there. The way that the economy is rigged to funnel resources to the top, the way that the political systems are corrupt, the way that jobs have been shipped away and your you know, downtown's decimated. You don't need some grand conspiracy other than the obvious one that is already out there for all of us to see. If we created a list of, you know, like the top donors to U.S. politicians who end up getting whatever the hell they want, on that list, it would, it would be majority Christian people. Right. Yeah. Or nominally Christian people, because we live in a country that's over 70 percent Christian. Right. So but that doesn't mean like if I came out here on the show every day and I had the, the, the Christian cabal of, uh, you know, satanic elites is, is, you know, controlling everything. That'd be ridiculous. It's like that. That's so that's such an ancillary thing, what their nominal religion is to the real issue in question. And these guys, it's just sad because I feel like there's so many people who might get involved in politics, might end, might go down the wrong rabbit hole. Yeah. And then they genuinely believe a guy like Alex Jones or Nick Fuentes or whoever is speaking truth to power. The other thing I worry about is, you've mentioned a number of times how, especially in that interview with Kanye and Fuentes, um, the original one, Alex Jones appears like kind of reasonable. And 
that's that's actually a scary phenomenon. And we're seeing this happen in the Republican Party, too, where it's like Brian Kemp, uh, who's a yes. governor of Georgia, just got reelected very easily because he appears moderate in comparison to the totally fucking insane people who are all in on Stop the Steal and all of that nonsense. Brian Kemp is not moderate Correct. by any reasonable stretch of the imagination. He is as far right on social issues, economic issues, like down the line, very consistently hard right. If you didn't have the example of these just like absolute conspiratorial maniacs out there, people would see like, oh, this is a very ideological hard right guy. But because you have this insane fringe showing their asses for everyone to see, Voters look at a Brian, Brian Kapp and are like, oh, he's he's reasonable. He's moderate. And it's going to be the same thing if um, DeSantis gets through the primary. Right. Let's pretend it's a world where, for whatever reason, Trump backs down and isn't a threat in terms of the general election, because that's a whole complicated piece. If you just have DeSantis versus Biden, DeSantis appears moderate when compared to the lunacy of Stop the Steal and Trump. There is nothing moderate about Ron DeSantis. So that's the phenomenon that actually concerns me about all of this. Like, people may be able to look really clearly at a Kanye West or a Nick Fuentes and be like, these people are maniacs and they're disgusting and deplorable. But then they might look at Alex Jones and be like, you know, he actually is, is kind of better than I thought. And he's actually a little more reasonable. It makes people who are crazy and fringe look like they are more moderate than they actually are. So the phenomenon you're talking about is the idea of the Overton window. Overton window, yeah, which that's is it. Like, the spectrum of debate that is reasonable, whereas the, what's considered reasonable, and if you go outside of that spectrum, it's like, oh, you're sort of dismissed and pushed out of the conversation. With so many people now, with Kanye West and Nick Fuentes and Milo and all these people now going full Nazi, yeah, the, the Overton window just keeps shifting further and further and further right. Yes. And so you know what the solution is? What? We need uh, Stalin apologists now in the conversation <laughs> to pull it all the way back left. We need people out there there's, like, there's some I think we should there. nationalize don't every get as, industry. They just don't get as much attention. There are some of those folks out yeah, there. Yeah, but like unironically now, we need, Bill Maher had did this in a new rule segment back when he was sort of based. Yeah. And he was like, um, we need a left version of the Tea Party and they need to be like fucking psycho. They need to demand like, I think you should have drive through abortions at McDonald's. I think that should be part of our our system. Yeah, but then this is the, also the guy who will like lose his mind about you know people would say defund the police, and that's kind of like well he's you know, changed he's changed yeah yeah years, no, you know? I know yeah. but listen if I'm going you're, back to if you're taking the Overton window conversation to its logical end you should see the people making the most sort of like outlandish or fringe claims as potentially useful for the broader conversation so I don't know yeah it's na complicated nationalize every industry yeah murder every boss <laughs> you just go down the <laughs> list you're gonna have these people murder every who are like I unironically love Stalin. And uh, I think we should, I think the U.S. should become the former Soviet Union. I think we should do everything that they did back then. Yeah. And I then think. when we come in and are like, how about we just like give everybody health care? People are like, like, oh, so, so moderate, like very so reasonable. I, yeah. I want to see somebody go out there and unironically argue to tax everything anybody makes over $100,000 a year at 100%. I want us to see somebody make that argument. Let's shift that so over to window we're like, back, baby. How about seventy percent? <laughs> people are like, okay, Man, that's moderate. Fine. These people are moderate. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so uh, wild, wild debate they had. Yes, indeed. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop, and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.